Okay, let's consider a polynomial example. And I think that you should really be beginning to see the power of our subject and its ability to take simple ideas from geometry and carry them over in a very effective way to other types of objects. In this case, polynomials, and in the next video, we'll consider an example from R3. So the task is the same, to decompose the polynomial x as linear combinations of these polynomials in all possible ways and capture it with a single expression. And once again, the key is the linear dependence of these four polynomials. That's right, these polynomials are linearly dependent. You may have had the feeling that the subject of the concept of linear dependence only applies to geometric vectors. But the whole idea of linear dependence is that it's only based on linear combinations, which are in turn based on adding things together and multiplying them by numbers. All of those things you can do with polynomials. So that concept of linear dependence and decomposition and capturing all possible ways to decompose x as linear combinations of these polynomials, all of these ideas carry over in a totally straightforward fashion to the case of polynomials. So let's see, how do we tell that these polynomials are linearly dependent? I think that in this case, it's easier to go for the second definition of linear dependence. That is to find a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. Can you see one here? So I made these polynomials sort of cyclical. It's sort of, they sort of come back on themselves. I don't know if this helps, but what I'm trying to say is that if you add them, then first the x's will cancel, then the 1's will cancel, and then the x squared will cancel. So a straight sum of p1, p2, and p3 equals zero, the zero polynomial. So that tells us that these polynomials are linearly dependent, and the non-trivial linear combination that we're always hoping to find for this kind of exercise is this, p1 of x plus p2 of x plus p3 of x equals zero. This right here is our fancy zero. And just one note, this is not zero the number. This is zero the polynomial, the, polynom the zero polynomial. So now to decompose x, we have to find y one way of decomposing it, and then add any proportion of this fancy zero and that's our answer. Okay, so how do we get x? Take a moment to figure out how to get x as a linear combination of these polynomials. Well, I don't know if it's easy to see unless you've had a lot of experience with these, but maybe it's not so easy to see, maybe it's not so hard to see. But I'm noticing that if you add this polynomial to this, x squared cancels, and then if you add these two to this, one will cancel as well, and we're left with x. So again, I don't mean for this to be a difficult decomposition exercise. I mean for it to be an easy decomposition exercise, because its point is to illustrate linear dependence, decomposition, and all of those concepts, rather than figuring out how to solve complicated decomposition problems. Complicated decomposition problems will come later. For now, we're focusing on easy decomposition problems, just so that we can understand the concepts better. Okay, so x equals p2, p2 plus p3 plus p4 plus alpha times the fancy zero, p1 of x plus p2 of x plus p3 of x. All right, and this completes this exercise. Now, if you want to write it as a proper linear combination, you might write alpha p1 plus one plus alpha p2 plus one plus alpha p3 plus p4. And that expression would capture all possible linear combinations that express this vector as linear combinations of these four vectors. And that's the whole point of linear dependence and the geometric perspective. So I actually think it's an example of a problem
that if I presented it to you uh, a couple days ago, assuming you've been watching the videos, then you would have no idea to even how to approach the problem. But once we solve similar and analogous problems in a geometric setting, it is now completely straightforward to address a problem like this in polynomials. So let's now do a similar example in R3.